Hello, my name is Jim and I'm a NidaTrader support representative. In this demonstration, we'll, we will be going over the NidaScript lifecycle and how to use onState change for various NidaScript actions. We will be looking at a strategy for ex this example, which uses data processing states. NidaScript objects go through a lifecycle of cloning, which allows the NidaScript object to populate the indicators and strategies fields in an indicators and strategies window. Populate default NidaScript properties in the indicators and strategy property grids. And to copy default settings, apply configured settings, and then to start processing data. This is where the majority of NidaScript development is focused. Looking at our screen here, we have the NidaScript editor open, we have a chart, and we have the output window open. I'm going to right click on my chart and select strategies. As we can see, there are already some prints that we see in the output window. NidaScript states change throughout the NidaScript lifecycle and start with copying the name properties to the indicators and strategies windows. This first state is state.setDefaults, and this is seen in the first clone operation. As we can see from the prints from our output window, we see set defaults and terminated when we have opened up this uh, strategies window. That's because the strategy has to get populated in this field here. Set defaults will be reached again for the next clone operation when an indicator or strategy is added to the configured field and the default property values are added in the right hand property grid. This state should be as lean as possible to prevent unnecessary computations as the script gets cloned. I'll select enable and then I'll click OK as well. After clicking OK, the strategy is cloned once more and added to the window. State.setDefaults occurs again to copy the default setting, and then state.configure is then reached to apply the user configured properties. It is a best practice to use this state for complex operations and for adding objects to your script that do not depend on data being loaded. Multi time frame into script objects uh, that add additional data with add data series should load their data within this state. When writing NidaScript strategies, it is also advised to reset class level variables that do not depend on additional data in the state so the strategy can be efficiently optimized in the strategy analyzer with is instantiated on each optimization iteration equals false. Some variables and objects that are not dependent on data uh, that could be reset here are timers, doubles, integers, bools, date time objects, brushes, arrays, and lists. If we scroll down into our sta uh, state.configure code in on state change, we can see all of the code here that we restart. So we create our timer here. We reset our doubles, bools, uh, date time objects, uh, order objects, and brushes here back to null. And we clear our arrays and create our new arrays here. And we clear our lists and create new lists as well. This state and each subsequent state are only reached in the final clone operation. State.data loaded is reached uh, next after the data required by the NinjaScript object is loaded. This is a data processing state. Data that is loaded by the primary data series and any data series added by the script will be ready in the state. Unlike state.configure, this state should be used only to reset class level variables and create objects that do depend on data to be loaded. For example, these objects could be indicators, series objects, or session iterators. If we scroll down to our code in state.setDefaults, we can see that we create our indicators here, we create our own series objects here, and we create our session iterators here. And session iterator, for example, is dependent on a bars object, which would not be ready before state.data loaded. After state.data loaded is reached, the state changes to state.historical, which signifies the beginning of processing historical data. Historical data is the existing data on our chart that is not getting streamed in from our data provider. This is a data processing state that can also be used for adding custom UI controls that require chart control, chart bars, chart panel, or NT window. In the example, we can see that chart control is checked to make sure that it is not null before accessing chartcontrol.properties.chart background. After historical data is processed, the NidaScript object transitions to state.realtime, and this is another data processing state. The transition state is marked as state.transition. After the transition state finishes and the NidaScript object begins processing stream data, state.realtime is reached. 
state dot real time should be used in ninja script strategies that use their own ordered objects. Uh, so then those order objects can be transitioned from a historical state to a real time state. This is done with the get real time order method. And if we scroll down to state uh, dot real time, we can see that my order object is assigned to get the uh, order object reference with get real time order here. And at the end of the NinjaScript object's life cycle, state.terminated is reached. This state is used to clean up resources and dispose of the resources that are added by your script. In this example, we can see our timer gets disposed here. I'll scroll down to state.terminated, and we can see my timer is disposed right here. NinjaScript objects other than indicators, market analyzer columns, and strategies do not enter data processing states and instead reach a state of state.active. Using the state system is a great way to minimize computations throughout the NinjaScript object's life cycle and to create scripts that efficiently manage the resources added to them. More information on these states can be referenced in the NinjaScript best practices page of the help guide under state management best practices. Thanks for your time, and I hope you found this video very informative.